Lucky me, episode six. I was right about it being a long day. I was glad when it was over. I'd eaten my dessert out of pure comfort, washed down with a cup of coffee to distract me from the laughing and joking coming from Hayden's glass box. I'd been ordered by Hayden to make sure he wasn't disturbed and that added insult to injury. I wasn't sure why I felt so hurt, as I certainly held no claim to him. He was my boss for crying out loud, but maybe it was a case of a bruised ego. His girlfriend Gemma was beautiful. With long chestnut hair and grey eyes, there was no competition. Plus she seemed perfectly lovely, and what I was feeling was definitely jealousy. Every now and then, Gemma would flash me a look and a smile, in a nice way, and I felt awful about my inherent need to dislike her. She was doing absolutely nothing wrong, except for sitting with the man I was insanely attracted to. At one point, I'd briefly been called into the glass box and asked to provide drinks, and she was polite and welcoming. By the end of the day, the only thing I really felt was guilt. I'd thrown myself at her boyfriend, little did I know, so I was one of those hussy PAs that you read about in magazines, ruining relationships due to their ruthless career needs, one office at a time. Packing up my belongings at the end of the day, I was glad to be going home. I would have a nice soak in the tub, eat a load of ice cream while watching a crappy film and sulk for the night. It was quiet in the office, as I'd had to unfortunately stay late and enjoy more time here than was necessary to make arrangements for Hayden and Gemma at the function on Saturday evening. It wasn't the best situation to be in. I liked a guy, but I had to book his bunk-up hotel suite for him to be with another woman. What had I signed up for? I should have stuck to my old job. Scanning around my desk to make sure everything was put away until tomorrow, I caught a glimpse of Lucy, entering through the double doors. Stopping what I was doing, I watched as she fixed her gaze on me and went to move forward. As I watched her, another body popped in front of me and blocked my view, a body in the form of James. Adjusting my eyes to focus on the sudden appearance of James standing in front of me, Hayden opened the door to his office. Glancing at Hayden, I looked back at James and noticed that Lucy had stopped in her tracks in the background. Hi Ava, I was just wondering whether you uh, would like to uh, go for a drink with me? James nervously asked now in front of an audience. With Hayden and Lucy watching us from two different angles, it was hard to concentrate on what was being asked of me. Was James asking me out? It may have sounded stupid, but why? Apart from the odd interaction between us, it never struck me that any attraction had ever really been there on his part. Not being able to move or speak, I could sense Hayden move closer to me, and snapping some papers down on my desk, the noise seemed to aid in bringing me back to the present moment. You want me to go out with you? I eyed, more curious than anything else. Er, uh, yeah, I was wondering if you wanted to go for a drink, sometime this week, he replied, looking as white as a sheet. Before I could even reply, the office double door slammed shut. So much for talking to Lucy. She didn't seem to like James at the best of times, so that was probably the nail in the coffin for our friendship. It was now just me, James and Hayden left. What an awkward situation this was. Couldn't this have waited until after work? Hayden snapped, glaring at James. Hang on a minute, was that hint of jealousy I could sense oozing from him? The guy who had spent the majority of the afternoon shacked up in his office with his girlfriend was now getting funny with someone asking me out? No, not happening. Technically, I have finished for the day, I interrupted, glancing at Hayden. James, I'd love to. When were you thinking of? I grinned. Oh, tomorrow night? He replied with a shocked expression. Tomorrow will be great. I can't wait. You have my number, yeah? I asked, gathering my belongings and breezing past him. Yeah, I have your number. I'll text you tonight about a time. Great, see you both tomorrow, I leisurely replied, waving a hand back at them. I was Hayden's assistant, nothing more, and if he was expecting me to sit at home like some sort of nun, then he could forget it. That night, James had texted me saying he would pick me up at 7pm the next day, and while it was nice to be asked out, I didn't know whether I was excited about it or not. The spark just wasn't there for me. No doubt it had something to do with Lucy's strops and Hayden. Hayden, 
The boss I had a major thing for, but was out of bounds. The boss I could easily fall for, and had literally done so several times when walking along in the ice. But the boss, who also had a girlfriend. I definitely felt the jealousy from Hayden when James had asked me out, but even he couldn't be that naive and hypocritical. The past me would have been thrilled about being asked by the office stud, but the present me wasn't as bothered. Hayden was much hotter, and my libido knew it. I thought about what Hayden had possibly wanted to talk to me about yesterday, and I came to the conclusion that he was going to tell me to forget about the kiss, and that he wasn't interested in me like that. I was no stranger to the fickle ways of the male variety, and it was no wonder that I wasn't the most secure person in the world. The next day at work, this never-ending mental narration wasn't budging, and I kept my head down and got on with my work. Hayden, apart from anything work-related, hadn't spoken more than two words in my direction, and that was mainly to ask for a coffee. James was nowhere to be seen today, and neither was Margot, come to think of it. Leon had asked me whether I was okay from across the office, and I'd given him a vague smile and nod in reply. Lucy had probably told him that I was going out with James, and while in the past he would have teased me no end in his excitable way, I don't even think he knew what to say with the way things were. Who the heck knew what was going on anymore? At the end of the working day, I wrapped everything up and shot out of the office like my life depended on it. I didn't want to be asked any questions about tonight, and I wanted to get ready in peace and quiet. I would go and try to have a nice time, because my past self would have been made up to be going on a date with James. It was strange how I would have preferred it to have been a certain someone else, but I suppose the forbidden fruit always seemed the sweetest. Back at home, curling my hair into soft waves, with my makeup done to the best of my ability, I was ready for my date. Wearing a simple red dress and heels, I needed a drink just to settle my nerves about being in a garment that seemed too short. Grabbing my matching clutch bag, I wandered into the kitchen to have a cheeky glass of wine to feel ready for the night ahead. Taking it through to the living room and settling myself on the sofa, I checked through my bag to make sure that everything like my lipstick and purse were inside and that my phone was fully charged. It was always best to be prepared. Checking my watch, it was now seven o'clock, so downing the last drop of wine that I had left, I propped the glass on the side table and got my jacket on, ready to go. Sitting back again, I waited and waited and waited. Tapping my foot in the usual annoying way I did, I checked my watch again and it was quarter past seven. Where the heck was he? Even though I had the odd bout of being late for things, I did like punctuality in a person and always thought it spoke volumes about whether you were important enough to turn up on time for, especially on a first date, and especially for one that I wasn't keen on going on anyway. After another while of waiting, the knock on the door finally came. Leaping up off the sofa, I gave my hair and makeup one last check over in the mirror near the door and opened it to find James stood on the other side. Hi Ava, ready, he smiled. I had been for the past half an hour. Hi, yeah, let's go, I replied, hooking the strap of my bag over my shoulder and closing the door behind me. Making tracks toward a bar that was situated nearby, I was glad to not be walking too far in these heels, as I could feel myself on the verge of toppling over, and I'd only had one glass of wine. There was a strip of local bars and pubs situated near to where I lived, and on a night like tonight, it was ideal. James was twittering on about work as we walked along, opening the door to the bar and letting me through first. To be honest, between trying not to fall over and wondering whether being out with him was such a good idea, I wasn't paying much attention. Ava, James called out over the music. I'm just going to the gents. Would you get me a lager top? Er, uh, yeah, I replied, watching him dart away from me. I gathered I was paying. Strike point one. Squeezing my way through the crammed bar crowd, I managed to get a spot at the front and leant on the bar to wait to be served. Now come on, Ava, give him a chance. It's one drink you're buying. Yeah, it was a good job you brought your purse, but you've liked this guy for ages, so try and enjoy the night, came the mental chatter as I waited in the queue for drinks. Eventually, a member of staff spotted me and I ordered myself a glass of wine and a lager top for James, paying for them through gritted teeth. Call me old-fashioned, but when on a date, I kind of expected the man to pay. He was the one who'd asked me out. I had to pay for everything else in life, 
and it would have been nice to have one night off from it. Gripping the drinks and trying not to tip them over strangers who were swaying dangerously close to them, I squoze myself through to the outskirts of the bustle and took a look around. It had taken me a fair amount of time to get served, so James had been gone for ages. Trying to see through the mill of bodies, I caught a glimpse of him in the far corner of the bar, talking to another woman. Leaning in close to her and laughing, he seemed very laid back while I was holding his drink. Hell to the no that I was allowing this to continue. Frog marching myself over to him, I stopped in front of the scene, giving my best unimpressed look in his direction. Ava, there you are, he smiled, as if this scenario was totally normal. See you around, the leggy blonde smiled, as she winked at him and trotted past me like Lady Muck. Strike point two. Eyeing her, I turned back and lunged his drink at him. Here, I snapped, as he took hold of it. Cheers, he grinned, still leering at the woman who was walking away. Want to sit down? Yes, I sharply replied, as he led me over to a couple of bar stools that were vacant. Sitting down, I propped my drink on the ledge that ran around the perimeter of the bar and took in the sights of the people who seemed to be enjoying themselves around us. It was all right for some. How are you finding your new position? He asked, raising his voice over the music and chatter. Position? Oh, you mean, hey, uh, Mr Lockhart's PA? It's okay, I disinterestedly replied. Word has it that he's a bit of a player, James commented, which caught my attention. Player? I echoed. Yeah, he likes the ladies. I suppose you can have as many women as you want with all that money, he sniggered. Ugh. I suppose so. Although, how do you know all this? Dunno. Just heard things through the grapevine. What sort of things has he had you doing? I heard he took you out for lunch. Rolling my eyes, I swear they would roll right out of my head one day, and I'd be fumbling about on my hands and knees looking for them. The gossips had been rife. I don't know what you're implying, but yeah, we went out for lunch, for business purposes only. I half lied. I wasn't telling him what we'd spoken about. I'm surprised he hasn't had you over the desk by now, or under it, he chuckled to himself. With my expression skewed, I wondered what planet he was on. I wouldn't have ever been talking to someone I liked about them being in sexual scenarios with someone else. Oh jeez, I hoped he wasn't one of those weirdos who liked open relationships and wanted to watch. No, he most certainly has not, I voiced in my sternest tone. Although even if he had, it would hardly be any of your business. So what does he have you doing? He eyed me intently. What is this about? I snapped, regretting the decision to come out tonight, and with all the weird questioning, James's attractiveness was only taking him so far. Nothing, he replied, holding his hands up in the air in a gesture of innocence. I just thought I'd find out what working life was like behind the doors of Mr Lockhart's office, he laughed. Much the same as yours, although without all the questioning... I bluntly replied, scouting out the bar again as a form of distraction. Sat there with him, I really couldn't believe that I'd ever liked James so much. After the mere start of tonight, the attraction was whirring off nicely, and I wondered whether the other women in the office would lust after him so much if they knew what he was really like. Then again, it was possibly James's ego at play here, because even though women flocked around him at work, a lot of the attention had shifted towards the new boss, and the sheer American hotness that had wandered into our lives. Shaking myself out of the thought of Hayden, I continued to drink my wine and spectate. By all accounts, and since the awkward line of questioning had ground to an abrupt halt, I wasn't the only one checking out what, or who, was around. James, sitting there looking like butter wouldn't melt, couldn't seem to peel his eyes away from a lot of the ladies present. Yeah, they were attractive, but considering this was supposed to be a date, little to no attention seemed to be placed my way. Call me selfish, but I always thought that when out on a date, you reserved your time and attention for your partner, not half of the room. My patience was really beginning to wear thin. He'd been late picking me up, had me pay for the drinks, had chatted up someone else right in front of me, asked me inappropriate questions and was now checking out anyone else of the female variety. The time slowly ticked by and even though the silence should have been awkward between us, James didn't seem to notice as he was too busy ogling anything in a short skirt. 
This date was beyond the joke, and while I used to joke about him being a Lothario, at this point it wasn't funny, because he actually thought he was one. After making my way through an excruciating glass of wine, I made an excuse to go back to the bar, and of course, he was more than happy with that plan. It probably meant he could get rid of me to flirt some more, and the wait at the bar would give me some time to format a plan to end this awful, supposed date. Leaning on the bar and being shoved by the odd drunk who didn't seem to care about personal space, I hatched a plan to buy him a drink to sweeten the non-existent blow of having to leave him and say that I had to leave because of an emergency. Buying him a bottle of beer, I pushed my way back toward him to find him sat there looking like cock of the walk and plonked the bottle down on the table next to him while doing my best impression of being in a rush. James, I'm going to have to go. I've just had a call off a friend and it's an emergency. I puffed and panted his way. What, now? he gasped, as if it was surprising that I wanted to run away. Yeah, I'm really sorry. I'll see you tomorrow, I called back as I bolted for the door. I'll give you a call, I heard his distant voice shout back. Please don't. Hot-footing it out of the bar, it was a relief to step outside into the wintry night and know that I was finally free of being around him. For a good-looking guy, he knew it, and what a massive turn-off that was. Plus, he was strange, asking me all those weird questions about work. Yeah, a date with him was never going to happen again. He was a moron. Being leered at by some drunks that were hanging around, I began to make tracks toward my apartment. I did notice how he hadn't even bothered to walk me home, or ask whether everything was okay. That could possibly be viewed as a good thing, because I didn't want him loitering around at my apartment, with me having to make up more of a lie on the spot than I initially had done. I wasn't brilliant at lying, so no doubt I would have had to told him to get lost in the end. Considering that I did still have to work with him, it was better to keep things civil. Safely getting inside my apartment, I slipped off my heels and felt the relief of walking flat-footed on the carpet. Turning the heating on and venturing into the kitchen to make a cup of tea, whilst waiting for the kettle to boil, I went and changed into my comfy PJs. Man, that felt good. It was an all-round relief to be at home again, and if that would have been my first date ever, it would have put me off dating for life. I shuddered when I thought about James. He certainly wasn't the one for me. It was actually nice to find out early on, rather than ten years down the line when you're married with a couple of kids. Making myself a gorgeously warm cup of tea, I settled myself on the sofa and flicked on the television. A whole hour and a half I'd spent with him, and it felt a waste of life. A sweeping thought crossed my mind of what he would be up to in my absence, and no doubt he would have been chatting up the nearest bit of skirt again. Pity he hadn't even looked at mine. What a waste of a perfectly good dress. Work was quiet over the next couple of days, and for that I was thankful. I was beginning to see some people I worked with in a different light, and I don't think my date with James had helped. Hey lady, Leon's voice pierced through. Hey, I replied, realising I was typing an email and hadn't got a clue what I had written. Sustenance, he grinned, tossing a muffin at me and perching himself on the edge of my desk. Thanks, I smiled, grabbing hold of it and tearing off the wrapper. Not a problem. Anyway, what's going on with you? You don't text, you don't call, he jested. I know, I'm sorry. I've just been really busy the past couple of days. Have you spoken to Lucy? Yeah, he replied, swallowing a chunk of muffin. I still don't know what's up with her. I gather you've not spoken to her yet. No, I sighed. I don't know what to say because I don't really know why we've fallen out. It's strange. I miss her. She's been weird with me. I do think she misses you too. She did tell me that James had asked you out, he eyed. Good news travelled fast, as always. So that's the real reason you're over here bribing me with a muffin, I chuckled. Maybe, he winked. Nah, I did want to speak to you to see how you are. I feel like I'm caught in between the two of you. No wonder I prefer men, he laughed. They're no better, I pouted. What's that meant to mean? Well, in referral to James, I went out with him for a drink a couple of nights ago. Ooh, and? he asked, leaning in, ready for the goss. It was awful, I chuckled. Awful? Not just awful, but bloody dreadful. He was late picking me up, he had me paying for the drinks, he was chatting up another woman in front of me, 
and in the end I made an excuse to leave. Never again, I grinned. I think I can safely say that the attraction toward him has well and truly worn off, and I'm not sure why I liked him in the first place. Jeez, was it really that bad? He gasped. Yep, at one point he was asking me really inappropriate questions. Like, Leon wondered. Like whether I was sleeping with the boss, things like that. It was really uncomfortable. Ugh, what a slime. Talking of a certain boss, has anything else happened there? He smirked. Not you as well. I can't escape the questions, I laughed. Yeah, but I'm your bestie. I have every right to ask and to know the answer. True, true. No, nothing has happened there and it won't and can't happen ever again. You've seen his girlfriend in the office. That kiss was a drunken mistake and only because I stupidly threw myself at him, I cringed. Fair enough. As long as you enjoyed yourself at the time, he chuckled. It wasn't too bad at all, I smiled. Ava, can I speak to you for a moment? Came the voice of Hayden, who seemed to have sprung from nowhere and was standing at the door of his office. Crap, how much had he heard? Leon passed me a screwed up look as I hesitantly stood from my desk and walked sheepishly by Hayden as he shut the door behind us. Ava, I... Hayden began. Sorry, Leon and I were just joking. He bought me a muffin. I explained, realising how ridiculous that sounded. Very interesting, he smirked, sitting down. Anyway, you wanted to speak to me? I spoke, sitting down and trying to pretend everything was perfectly normal. Yes, it was about the other day when you were approached by James. Jeez, he was making it sound like he'd mugged me. What about it? I eyed curiously. Nothing. I'd just prefer it if you kept your private affairs out of the office. What? I choked, chuckling to myself. I've told James that when you are here, he is to conduct himself professionally around my assistant. I don't expect to walk in on her being asked out. Seriously? In all fairness, it was the end of the day and I couldn't control what he was going to say. I was just as shocked as anyone else. Yes, but I also saw the effect it had on Lucy and I won't have trivial things like dates affecting the way this business runs. Is that how this is going to be? I snapped. What? He wondered. Because you pay me to be at your beck and call, as you put it yourself, you think you can butt into my private life? No, I didn't mean it like that, he backtracked. Oh, I think I understood you perfectly, I fumed, standing up. Now, if you'll excuse me, Mr Lockhart, I have work to do. Ava, he called out, darting in front of the door before I could open it. No, you are my boss, I get that. But in other areas of my life, I am my own woman. I make my own decisions and by all means, fire me for saying that, but please don't ever think you can control me. Without another word, he moved away from standing in front of me and opened the door to let me through. Wow, where the heck did that come from? Recently, I was in the zone of putting men in their place and it felt good. I was fed up of being walked on. Abruptly sitting down at my desk, I suddenly felt all shaky. Bloody hell, he could have actually fired me for speaking to him that way, but I definitely think it needed to be said. He didn't know that I had a really crappy date with James and that it certainly wouldn't be happening again, but he had no right to tell me or anybody else what they could and couldn't say. Reluctantly, and in the defence of James, when he had asked me out, he hadn't been unprofessional. If he was anything like myself, that time of day, he probably thought there would have been nobody else around when he did ask. No wonder I hadn't seen him around since. Imagine if I would have really liked James. Would he have been kept away from me? I didn't want him around me, but that was beside the point. Nope, that definitely didn't wash with me. Hayden, shacked up with his girlfriend in his office, seemed to be full of double standards, but not on my watch. What the heck was all that about? Control freak. Bashing and banging my way through my workload, I think Hayden could sense my annoyance as he glanced out of his glass box. Good. Let him know that he crossed the line. Personal assistant or not, I wouldn't stand for that crap. The only thing I could see his point on was Lucy. I would have to sort things out with her soon and get to the bottom of what was wrong. I missed my friend and I also felt sorry for Leon, stuck in the middle like a brightly coloured piggy. I was glad when the day was done. Hayden had stayed out of my way, only talking to me when he really had to, and that was for the best to give me space while I simmered.
I wasn't sure what men saw when they looked at me, but the days of being treated like dirt were certainly over. I'd had enough of that to last a lifetime.